Howdy folks, welcome back. If this is your first time here, just welcome. I'm glad you're here. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize about the confusion to everybody, especially those of you who have just tuned in. This little mini series is about a 2010 Land Rover Range Rover Sport. I found during the Diag process that I was able to do some of the work, but some of the work I was not capable of doing and I have to send it away for that. The confusing part is that for some of you, you came over here from the shorter diagnostic video and this video was previously unlisted. Now that it has been posted, you may have been returned through notifications or other YouTube features. So if you've already been here and already seen this video, I apologize. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and get straight to it. Back to the five liter supercharged V8. We're gonna go ahead and pull the spark plugs. Happening Z hood. All right, it's the next work week. Let's go fetch the Range Rover, get her back into the shop. I don't think I'm gonna do anything, stock in the engine, uh, with the uh, the auto ride system. I'm just not uh, I'm not equipped to to uh, operate such things, and I also do not have the training and foundational knowledge to troubleshoot that system. We're going to uh, we're gonna work on that misfire. We're gonna do that spare tire thing, and there's a few other knickknacky items. I'll see if I can't squeeze them in in this video. So. I'm gonna go ahead, back this thing into the big corner rack. Beep, 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 beep. It's beeping at me because I'm backing up. Beep, 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 beep. Sensors are all linking up in the car. Beep, beep, beep. I think we're good here. A little bit farther forward. There we go. Just in case I need to lift it up. Parking the auto. Hey, hey, hey. Powering down. Didn't listen. All right, let us pop it in Zoo Hood and uh, get started here. Range Rover, it roves the range. Where's my hood release lever? I lost it. It's those fancy Euro levers. There we go, supercharged. Okie dokes, well, I guess the best place to start is the beginning and most beginnings of engine repairs are gonna start with the uh, air filter uh, intake tubing. So let's get this stuff disconnected and unplugged. And we can start peeling back some of these covers. We've got to get to this, uh, there's a cover, like a foam molded insert type of thing that goes over the cylinder head on this side. One more on the other side. Let's get those things removed and that should give us some access to our coils. We can pull those guys out and then we'll uh, begin extracting our sparking plugs. Let's get this guy unscrewed right here. Uh, one more, there's like six, uh, Six screws in this box here. Let's get that guy out. Mass airflow disconnect while I'm here. Uh, negative. One more screw. It's not out all the way. Yeah. There's another air filter over on the other side. This vehicle is equipped with two. That's how you know it's good. Ovular clamp. All right, air filter. Look at that, brand new. All right, let's move in a little closer here. This is our little molded foam type of deal thing I was talking about. Let's get uh, our oil cap removed. Hold this guy back, and there are our coils. Four on this side, four on that side. We're gonna need to go in there with uh, some Torx bits, pull those guys out, and then we can extract the plugs. Okay, I've got the power steering reservoir detached from the air box. Pull that guy out, there we go. Down over there with you. I'll probably have to do the same thing on this side. So let's see what 100,000 mile supercharged spark plugs are gonna look like. Become disconnected, there we go. Let's pull this thing out, see what we've got to work with. Yeah. Come on, coil. Become removed. I'm out. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Oil looks good. Let's 
spark plugs way down there. Yeah, I get to use my super duper extra long spark plug socket. It's actually not for Land Rovers, but it'll fit. Unclickage. What do we get? True. NGKs. Yeah, not terrible. I see the uh, anode is a little worn away. Okie dokes. Oh, now it's time for the blowback. Re you didn't use NGKs. That's right, I bought some Denzos. Got some Denzos. Denzos will fit. Denzos will work. These will suffice. Very good. They look the same. They smell the same. It must be the same. Let's go ahead and get this installed and we'll move on and uh, get the uh, remaining seven. Put that guy down in its home there. Starter by hand. We'll run it down with with the tool. Gently. Until she stops. And we'll uh, apply torque with a torque wrench. All right, let's get an actual click in. And then we'll go ahead and get serious and get the rest of these things done. That's the crush washer crushing. There we go. Torque achieved. Here, you know what? Let's move you guys over here to a better line of sight. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the pace here. We're going to get serious. Get this job done with some haste. I'm gonna go ahead, systematically pull off all the uh, all the connectors. We'll pop these guys out. We'll pull all the coils. Oh, that's a that's a hard hard to reach spot back there. Nice, it's coming apart easily. That's cool, and it didn't break all the pieces off like a like a Nissan. Uh oh. Oh no, I don't fit. Look at that. I have to do this manually. Okie doke. So here we go. Got a little Torx 30 right here. That's actually a tamper proof Torx. See the hole in the middle of it? Uh, a little ratchet driver. So I'm going to have to get these uh, these coil bolts out by hand. I can't, uh, can't fit a tool in there. Which kind of slows down the process ever so slightly. But we have a corrosion free engine compartment as well. So that should, uh, that should make this uh, less annoying and a little bit more uh, smooth. I appreciate the non-rusted cars. There we go. Every week is a, a new challenge around here and the learning curve is incredibly steep. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I had like, like a full staff and three lifts and two garage doors, a couple employees, but I'm, I'm afraid to go down that road because that means I'm responsible for somebody else's livelihood. And I don't even know how I manage my own half the time. I just do, do without thinking. Come on, last bolt. Don't make me take this AC line off to get this out. That's That'll upset me. No, I don't have the finger strength to turn it. Come on. Everything I just said was just invalidated by this last coil bolt. Look at that. Well, not everything. My gripes about work remain. But the ease of operation, that's, uh, that's changing here. Come on, last little bolt. Yeah, I can't turn that one by hand. Maybe it's rusted. Oh, there's rust on it. Work declined. Send the tow truck. Actually, I did decline work. I, I declined the suspension work. <sighs> Come on. No, it still won't come out. Hmm. I'll have to put an impact gun on it. Come on, almost there, I can feel it. It's starting to free up some. These threads are a little crusty on this one. See it? 
No, you don't see it because my big orange hand is in the way. Ah, my fingers are cramped and stuck. Come on, push through the pain. There we go. Got it. That's the that's the last coil on this side. See that sneaks out through the bottom there. That's cool. Sweet. Got it. Here, let's see if I can dig these guys out with a wobbly spark plug socket. That's too deep. Okay, let's try that. Try a different approach. I have an idea. I need more extension so I can get the tool up here in an area where I can work at it with another tool. There we go. Let's try that. Come out. This is gonna work. That one's a little worn out. It's two plugs removed. Plug number three. Yeah, that's not so bad. And I lost four because I can't see in the hole. It's too deep. Uh, I know it's down there. Got it. Come out. All right. Okay. Got three more on box, but let's go ahead and get them started. We'll start them up by hand and then we'll go down the line with the torque wrench and give them some clicks. After we run them down, there we go. That's on the bottom. Two plugs done. Number three plug coming in detached from the tool. Again, starting it by hand. Don't want to cross thread a supercharged uh, Land Rover head, do we? Screw that guy in. Give it some forward action here. This is why those uh, universals are great. Because you can get into hard to reach places. Click. That was a pre-click. Okay. Now remember, these aren't torqued. They're just uh, run down until they stop. They're not tight. Oh, I didn't put a plug in that one yet. That's silly, Ray. What are you doing? I'm like, why won't it thread? Let's see here. So I was wondering something. Actually, I've wondered this uh, throughout my lifetime. Why is it that the names of each month does not actually reflect the numerical value of the month? Uh, for example, October is the 10th month, but oct is the prefix for eight. Uh, September for seven, deca, December for 10, yet, all of those months are like two months ahead of schedule because October is the 10th month, but uh, if it's called Oct, October, shouldn't that be the eighth month? Why has that happened? I'll tell you why that's happened. It's because of the bloody Romans. But then the Romans got all egotistical on us. They wanted to name two months after their emperors. They named months after Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. Seven, eight, nine, ten, because they are called seven, eight, nine, ten. That's what they are. Which means, where is the 13th month? A little bit of food for thought. And you know, while we're on this conceptual rabbit hole, why is it that the new year, the calendar new year starts in January when the physical new year for species technically starts around April or May? Like, shouldn't April 1st be the first of the year? Because, you know, that's when, when chickens are hatching and when you sow your crops and when babies are born for the most part. Animals come out of hibernation, so shouldn't they do that in the beginning of the year instead of having the beginning of our year start in January? Which is the dead of winter? 
picnic. And I know that's a pretty ab abstract contract concept words and it goes against like everything we were taught in school and in life but doesn't it just make sense especially the numerical values of each month I, I don't think that those make sense at all because October should be the eighth month and not the tenth I'm convinced the system is wrong or I need to get a bigger tinfoil hat hmm that was torque wrench slippage. Come on, become tight. Become tight. There we go, clicks. Okay, that's four plugs installed and torqued. I forgot if I torqued this one or not, so I'm just gonna do it again. And the survey says, I must not have because it's turning, there it goes. I was distracted and I walked away and then I forgot where I left off and had to go back and recheck. Fix. Okay, I'm about to get the coils replaced, but before doing such things, I need to replace the coil boots. I see no reason to do all this work and leave these 100,000 mile boots here. So we're just going to change these guys out right now. Uh, tape. Come on, tape. I just made this hard on myself. It's fine. There. You lose tape. So what we do, separate this from the coil. I'm gonna do that without breaking it. Let's get behind it a little bit here. There's some uh, surface adhesion and some friction going on. Get behind that guy. Come out! There we go. And the spring stayed inside, you can't see. The spring stays inside. That's what makes the electrical connection... I can't get it out. That's what makes the connection between the coil and uh, the spark plug. So what we're going to do, we'll grab our new boat, boot, or drop our spring down in there, and we'll slide that guy right back onto the coil good to go now that our coil has been rebooted let's give it some uh, some dielectric right in the hole there and we can drop her down into the spark plug tube and uh get this guy bolted in oh this is the one i had to do kind of backwards like hang on pardon my big noggin yeah. I've got to fold this boot almost like 180 degrees. Good thing it's flexible. Ow. All right, that coil's in position. Just need to get it pressed down over the plug. Okay, got it. We'll run the bolt back in. And the hard one on this side will be done. They're getting easier as we move forward. This is why I like to do the harder side first and then move towards the easier stuff. It reduces uh, physical and mental fatigue. Because if you spend energy doing the easy stuff first, then you'll be less motivated to do the harder stuff. But if you spend your energy on the hard stuff first and it only gets easier, it keeps the motivation up. It's a little uh, psychological trick of mine. And believe me, I need plenty of psychologicals. Don't we all? Let's get this guy tightened down. Yeah, man. It's going in easier than it came out, which is good. Come on, spark plug. There we go, it's getting tight. And click. Okay, that one's plugged in and secured. Let's get the other three coils rebooted 
and then we can get those guys installed. Same procedure with the rest of these guys. We'll get behind them, a little screwdriver here. Break that surface uh, adhesion and separate the coil in the boot. There we go. That's two. Another. You could probably try to get a hold of that with plier pliers and just twist it, but you run the risk of breaking the plastic on the coil, which is uh, very costly. Twisting helps. Once you do the twist and you generate some motion, that means there's no longer contact on a very small, almost micro microbial level. There's no contact and uh, therefore if there's no contact there's no or less friction and it helps uh helps the thing slide off yes science there we go let's get these other three unboxed here and numero tres goodbye tape Drop that one in. Tape is stuck to my glove. Drop that one in. That's two untaped and assembled. Number three. See how I'm giving this a twist? Again, that reduces some of the friction internally and will allow this to spread on all the way. Like pushing it, it's harder to do, but if you give it a twist while you push, it goes right together. It's a no problem. Get in there. Very nice. We can lube these up a wee little bit. A little squirt right here. Open. There. And we'll drop them down into their holes. No particular order necessary. Just whatever fits. Push her down. Go in, get in there. Where's my screws? There's one. Again, this should just get easier as we go along here. Uh, third screw, third screw, third screw. I don't know where it is. Hmm. Okay, well, that uh, that third screw took me a little while to find. Uh, it was actually in my shirt pocket. I don't remember doing that, but uh, that's where I found it. Always check the pockets. You never know. I've had things fall into my pocket and not known about it. That was fun. Plug these guys in real quick. Go on, get down there. Connector clicks, good to go. Let's go ahead and run these little screws down. And then uh, we'll make them tight. That one's hard to get to. Okay, so this one's the hardest one now. I'm gonna run that one down. There, there we go. Some good flangey articulation. Now I can get the right angle for the dangle here and put some put some torque on that. Much better. Speed it up. There we go. Make them tight.
Mix. Okay, that's two of them torqued. Come on. Coil click, that's three. And then this last one right there. Good to go. Let's go ahead and get this little cover dropped back in. We don't want to forget about that. That would be unprofessional. Always put your engine covers back. That's easier said than done, but it should be done regardless. Hmm. How does this go? Insert foot in mouth. This comes up, under, and over. There we go. That's the way. Uh huh, uh huh. I like it. Uh huh, uh huh. There. Oil cap back in position. Let's go on over to the other side. Okie dokes. One side is done. Oh, I need to tuck that. Uh, that shield in a little better. There we go. One side's done. Let's go ahead and pull the intake and air box off of this side over here. Hey, that's a lot of stuff in the way. Oh, I hope I don't have to take apart this battery tray to get uh, get those other plugs out of there. We'll see. Let's go ahead and get this apart real quick and uh, see if I can get access to that back side. Maybe I have to go through the fender well. I really don't know. That's not gonna work either. I'm using the wrong tools for the wrong purpose. Oops. Using the wrong tools, I wouldn't do that. That's not something Ray would do. Wrong tools for the right job. Wrong job for the right tools. Nah. Come here. Okay, I've got six screws on this air box. We'll pull this filter out next. I'll be back when I'm done pulling screws out. It's boring. Oakley dokley last one Let's pull this uh oh i lied second to last one there's one more last one the final last one yeah this cover here has to go come on out there we go look a battery found it oh, there we go get that out of here brand new engineer filter element Times two, we'll pull that out. Pull this guy out. Let's see, we've got some evap hoses to disconnect here, I think. Mm, yeah, let me just disconnect this one right now. We'll set this guy aside back here. Wiggle this little cover thing out. Maybe I can do these plugs without pulling this battery tray out. I don't, I don't know. Never done this job before. Pardon my big noggin here. I'm trying to see what I can see, which isn't much. It's a coolant line. I don't want to take that off. Why are we stuck with no space? Oh, I disapprove. Can't like it. There we go. Okay, there's our cover. I might be able to get uh, get these guys out. You know, let's change our, our position here. Let's go over here on this side. All right, I'm uh, supremely confident that I need to start pulling some of this stuff apart. I've got to remove this uh, harness bracket right here so I can reach the bolts on the coils. And there's no way I'm getting back there to that last spark plug, so I'm gonna have to pull at least this panel thing off right here. So what we've got going on, looks like there's a connector connected to it. Let's get that thing removed, and then uh, I'll see what I can do about getting this piece separated. I might have to pull the battery out too. You see, this thing's kind of clipped on. Pocket screwdriver to the rescue. Just pull those clips, there we go. Okay, that connector is now out of the way. See what else holds this guy together. Looks like there's just some clips 
sort of down here on the bottom. Come out of here. That's one released. There's, I think there's another one. Can't see it. I think it's back here behind. Yeah, yeah, it's right over here. I see it now. Pop that guy up. And this whole, uh, this whole piece right here should come free. Unhook this uh, fuel line or evap line, whatever that is. Sneak this thing out. Set you down over here with your friends. So we've got a little bit more space. Not much. I might be able to get in there and take care of that coil. If not, I've got to pull the battery out and this battery tray and the fuse box. I don't want to do that. Okay, let's get to work on this little wiring harness here. It's held on to the uh, valve cover with just a couple little clips. Let me unclip these clips and we'll just pull the harness away from the cover. Uh, obviously I'm not gonna remove it because it's attached to everything else electrically, but I can pull it back to uh, pop these coils out. Come here. Come off. Ooh. Please. Ooh, that back plug is gonna be a bear. I can tell you right now. 100%. There we go, okay. So this harness is as free as it's gonna get. Let me get down and dirty with it and get our uh, connectors unconnected. Glad this thing's clean. All right, going in long range for this connector. Pop this one loose. Come on, connector. I should have done this side first. This is the much harder side. Okay, that's two connectors. Okay, here comes three connectors. That was easy. Four connectors, can't even see it. screwdriver can though. All right, fourth one's disconnected. Let's get in there and uh, get these Torx bolts removed and then we'll sneak these coils out. Should have read the manual. Step one, remove supercharger. Yeah. All right. Get that guy out. The bolts actually look easy to get to. I just sneak behind uh, that harness right there and pull them out. These front two coils, that'll be no problem. It's that one way out back that uh, is giving me some concern. Because it may not be possible to get that thing out without some uh, massive disassembly. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna sneak around, unclick that. Oh, whoa, 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 losing it. Got it. And that last one, I can still get a tool on that one. Okay, we're 25% of the way to almost being halfway there. Let's go ahead and sneak these coils out. We'll get the one up front first. Breaking protocol. Come out. Come out, I said. Please. I will pry bar you. Oh, come on. Okay. Pry driver. Seriously? The boot has it stuck in the tube. There we go. We got one. Yeah, that back one's gonna be a nightmare. Not looking forward to it. Here comes boot number two. Got her. Uh, the third one. Now it's getting hard. 
and sweaty and hot in here. You guys see what I'm doing? <clears throat> I can't. Let me kind of fold it. The boot is still in the spark plug hole. All right, it's out. Let's just kind of walk this thing over. There. Okay, moment of truth. Can I get it? Can I not? Hey, sorry if there's wind noise over here. I, I had to point the fan at me because uh, it's, it's kind of really hot. Um, and I'm sweating. Let's try to get back here with my big flanges. I don't even know if I can get a hold of that thing. Come on, two hands. I need to get two hands on it. I'm trying to get under it and behind it to give it some pulling up force back towards us. Come on, there we go, there's our pop. And the coil is out. Again, I had to bend the boot, you know, sideways to get it to come out of the hole. We got it. Okay, now, let's pull the plugs out. So I don't often get to employ the use of this tool because it's very cumbersome and awkward and not really effective. But when you need it, you need it. And that tool is gonna be this double locking wobbly extension. It's for getting into those really hard to reach places. So what I'll do is I'll throw my existing wobble socket onto it. So now I got a triple jointed wobbly extension. It's like a compound suicide extension. Totally not gonna work. I mean, it's it's not a, an effective tool, but for getting into these stupid hard to reach places like this, it can be a, a savior. Now I realize for this application on this first spark plug, it's not really necessary, but the rear ones, this thing might seriously come in handy. So let's get these plugs pulled and see what they look like, unthick. Yeah, see, totally ridic ridiculous. Like, look at that thing. That is not how your power tools are supposed to operate. All right, enough screwing around. Let's see about uh, spark plug number two. Again, this one I probably could have removed without this triple jointed goofy wobbly socket extension thing, but you know what? I need to have some fun because I don't like this particular operation. So I'm going to enjoy it. Second one, remove. Okay. Now for the hard part, we're going to go under this uh, coolant line and snake our way back down into hole number three. Okay. Let's get our extension on it because we need to uh, bring our tool like around the battery. This is going to be proof of concept for this tool. If I can get around to this one, I can probably get the uh, other one out. Let's break this guy loose, unclick. Yeah, it's like turning a corner with your, uh, with your power tools. Okay. Number three is out. The plug looks to be in similar condition as the other one. I don't see the little uh, iridium or uh, platinum tip on the anode. It is worn away. Now for hole number four. The nearly impossible to get a hold of hole number four. We're gonna go over the coolant line this time. Over, under, around, and through. It's like tying your shoes. Except with a supercharger in the way. 
please. Oh, there we go. It's going in. Love it. When it slips in, there we go. I think. I think my angle's wrong. It's too tight of an angle. Let's uh, go under that line. Negative. It's binding. Angles are too steep. Let's try to get this way over here. There it comes. It's working. Nice. Did I win? I win. Got it. Got it out. Wonderful. All righty. Old spark plug out of the tool. New spark plug going in. This is where we get real scary because we're inviting the opportunity for this thing to bind up and potentially damage our spark plug. So I need to make sure all this is super straight uh, during the install. Definitely got to make sure that the threads are. Uh, threading properly. They feel like it. I'm giving the tool a little bit of a tug and I can feel the rubber hanging on to the spark plug, which tells me that it is threading. So we'll just run this down by hand. I'm not gonna stick a power tool in that hole, not this time. Too risky, you don't wanna damage it. Okay. Okay, it's bottomed out, torque wrench. Let's tighten this thing down, then we'll move on to the next hardest, or less hardest one. This, uh, that double wobble extension works really well inside of spark plug tubes, because the tube will actually keep it in line. If it was freestanding, it would flop all over the place and it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be effective. There's our click. Double click it. Hmm. It turned. Okay. Spark plug tool removal. Pull that guy out. Good to go. Let's get uh, the next plug set up and started. Under the line. Back around in the hole. Can't find the hole. Third hole is hard to find. It's really hard to get in there. I'm off. I'm off center. Please go in. I don't want to force it. Yeah, I'm way off center. Hang on. I feel with my finger first. We'll probe it first and then go for glory. There, there, got it, got it. Just running the threads down. Slowly. reached the bottom of the threads on the plug. Let's get some torque on it. Multiple clicks. Come out. Yeah, what an apparatus. Craziness. All right, approaching a little bit of smooth sailing here. There's our next one. Plugs down in the hole. Again, sorry for the wind noise if that fan is getting caught by the microphone. It's, it's brutally hot. 
right now. Approximately 91 degrees. It's on the Fahrenheit scale. That's the American scale. There we go. And torque wrench. There we go. Click action complete. One to go, all right. I also uh, recently had a delivery. We are going to uh, replace that spare tire crank, the one that was broken. That's gonna get replaced. Believe it or not, I actually found a replacement unit for that. Shocking. I did not expect that. But my parts guys came through. I said, hey, this is what I need. Can you find it? And they said, yep, I'll let you know. And then they found it. And then they shipped it. And now I have it. And now I can fix the car. Yay! Okay, that's torque on the last one. Got her. All right. Goodbye, weeby wobbly apparatus. Alrighty, so in an effort to save us a little bit of viewing time, I've gone ahead and tossed the new boots and springs on, uh, on the old coils. So let's go ahead and grease them up, get them down in their hole and bolt them down, connected and uh, insecured. Yeah, that one's easy, let's just get you out of the way right now. Goodbye. Here, this one's easy. Let's just get this one out of the way right now. Goodbye, now I'm feeling better. I know that's the opposite of how I normally would do this, but I don't care. In my mind, I'm almost done, even if the last part is really hard, which it's gonna be. <sighs> Sliding this coil all the way back to the rearmost spark plug. Now I just need to finagle it down into that hole, which is right here by my index finger. Bend this guy around, get it down in position. Please go in, please bend. Do it. Oh, I can't see and it's so far away I can barely feel it. I just kind of have to just peck at it till I feel it go in. I think. I think that's it. Yeah, let's push it in some. See if we can't find the bottom. Uh, oh, it's backwards, hang on. That's why it's not going. The connectors face the, towards the rear, that way. Reach up and around here. Pull it out some, rotate it. You know, while I've got my hand right here, I'm just going to go ahead and slip that connector on. Snap that thing into place. It'll be easier now that I've got some working room. Okay, that coils in. Felt it bottom out. Coil number three. Slide that down past the cooling hose. And then move it rearward. And let me see if I can't find that hole right there. That's it. So we'll fold this little boot, bend it, slip it down. We'll plug in the connector since it's up here and kind of in our face. Safety click. And all the way down. Let's connect the next one. That one's connected. Okay, now we can back up some and uh, 
get those bolts that secure the coils to the head installed. Very good. And there's one more connector click right there. All right, so four coils are in their home. Let's get the bolts in. So we pull the harness back, drop them down, pull the harness back up, thread them in. There's one. Next. I can't, I don't have room to fit my fingers. I wasn't built to work on Range Rovers. Or Range Rovers weren't built to be worked on. Maybe that's what it is. Thread. Get on in there now. Okay. That's two. Third one's coming in. It's a little farther back. center there we go Whew. so glad that fan is on me I mean, it's still hot but at least there's some airflow to dry up all the sweat come on go in there there we go there we go there we go good 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 okay and then the really hard one cross your fingers she's she's way back there you guys see it? Not even, I can't even see it. That's a miracle this is even happening. I really thought I was gonna have to pull this battery tray out. All right, that one's threaded. No, it's not. I thought it was. I thought wrong. I misjudged you, spark plug. And it turned and it's off. That's cute. Going back, hang on here. The coil turned and the little bolt fell all the way down. It's still in the coil, but it's next to the threads. Not, uh, not aligned with the threads. Come, and the harness is now blocking it. This hurts my fingers. Oh, come on. Oh, crap. I've assembled myself into a corner in which I cannot escape. I need to pull the bolt back out of the coil and try again. That's the only way. Okay, trying again, round two. I'm losing. Did I get it? Is it going in? Yeah, 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 yeah. The threads have started, got it. Okay, let's tighten these guys down. Evil ignition coil. Yeah, getting easier now. Yay. Last one right here, all the way up front. Now we can take that harness and slip that back over these little tabs. That secure it to the valve cover here. Easy. Jeez. Oh no, too far. There. Clicks, many clicks. All right, got them. That harness thing is connected. Let's go ahead and back her up some. All right, I've got the little heat shield thing back into position. That was a, a bear. <laughs> now I just need to slip 
this battery tray shield piece back in. We'll clip that in. Clip that harness uh, back into its holder. Then uh, I'll toss the air boxes back in and uh, this segment of maintenance will be complete. Why does this stuff always come apart easier than it goes to together? Why? Couple snap crackles and pops, that's in position. Connectors connected, that's back in position. Wires are tucked away. Let's put this power cable back down that little slot where it lives. And that clips on with a little plastic clip down here. That's all good. There we go. Stay. Wonderful. All right, I've got the air boxes back on. Let's get uh, let's get our little battery tray cover thing back in here. Kind of goes under, over, and then clips in. That's good to go. Let's pull the tools out back to the cabin let us go starting the engine see how she runs uh, you guys won't be able to feel it but I will uh, I will be checking for that misfire on startup I recall having felt that earlier I felt it when we started it out in the parking lot this morning and I want to check it right now starting the engine oh the key's not in here Hang on, I'm silly. Why did I do that? Got it, right here. That's odd, I usually don't take the keys out of the cars. Okay, take two, starting the engine. Why, what's going on? It's not starting. What have I done? It's not, this is not working. Did I break it by unplugging stuff? Lock, unlock, I'm in the car, I'm out of the car, I'm back in the car, brakes, starting the engine. Weird. Whatever though. Anyway, I have not felt a vibe, no misfire, this is good. down Ew. shut off button sticky I think all right let's go fetch our engine cover put the cover back on because it's not supercharged unless it says that it's supercharged we don't want to downgrade it do we so I'll slip this guy back into its home here it's got two little rubber grommets in the back those slide into these little slots right here and then in the front there's two more grommets and it it moves downwards and pops into those. So we just slide those in just like so. That one's misaligned on that side, got it. And then give it down and another down right here. Missed. Uh, there they are in the back, see that? There we go. Okie dokie, closing up. Let's do the test drive phase. Closing the Land at Rover, Range Rover. Hey, why do they call it a rover twice? Like, can't it just be a Range Rover? Stocking's the engine. All right, let's get out of here. Let's go at the road, see how she rides. Riding along. So far, so good. No misfires. Let's give it some steam. Oh yeah, it's got power. Love the supercharger. Forced induction is the best. Unless you got a bunch of huge turbos on teeny tiny little motors, that's a, I think that's kind of like burning the candle on both ends. But other than that, love forced induction. All right guys, this thing's good to go. I'm gonna head around the block, hit the big road up, go back to the shop, call it a day. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. And a Land Rover.